In the 1950s, a Hungarian dancer called Nicholas Darvas, or as we call him in Hungary, Darvas Miklós, has turned $38,000 into 2 million trading stocks using his simple strategy. So in today's video, I will explain the basics of his strategy, then I will show you a simplified version of it and test it 100 times to see if it's still profitable. At the end of the video, I will show you the results and a few optimization tips that can make this strategy better. But first, let's see the original Darvas box strategy. Darvas's original strategy was focusing on buying 52-week high breakouts when there is a significant volume increase. Darvas stated his method worked best when applied to industries with great potential and revolutionary products. Here you can see one of his most famous trades at the time on the Lorillar stock. Although this example is presented on the weekly chart, Darvas said that his strategy can be used on any time frame. What he first looked for is if the stock is in a high growth industry. Lorillard was a cigarette producing company with increasing sales, therefore in a very promising sector of the 1950s. This was also confirmed by the growing volume of the stock. Once Darvas picked his stock, he waited for a new 52 week high. Once the price has pulled back from its 52 week high and created a low, Darvas has drawn a box around the high and the low points, this is what he called the Darvas box. The next step is to wait for a breakout out of the box. Once the breakout occurred with an above average volume, he entered into a long position at point B. His stop loss was usually placed very tight somewhere inside the Darvas box. His basic risk and money management idea was to cut the losses quickly and let the winners ride. However, his first trade had hit his stop loss. But he also made several other trades on this stock as he saw new Darvas box formations. These entry points are shown by the letters D, E and F. While adding to his first position multiple times, he constantly moved up his stop loss and finally exited at point G. This trade has had around a 1 to 14 risk to reward ratio, which is exceptional. If you want to read more about how he made 2 millions in the stock market using this strategy, check out his book linked down in the description. And now let's see how we are going to use his strategy on today's markets. First of all, open up the Bitcoin USDT 4 hour chart. After that, open up the indicators tab and search for Darvas box. We are going to use this one. This indicator will give us the buy and sell signals. For filtering some of the bad entry points, we are going to use an EMA as trend filter. So type in EMA and click on exponential moving average. Finally, set its length to 200 and your chart is all set. Now let's go over the entry rules quickly. For a long position, first we need the price to move above the 200 length EMA. Then we need to see a buy signal printed by the Darvas box indicator. As you can see, this indicator draws different boxes and gives the buy and sell signals once price breaks out of these boxes. The next very important rule is that we can only enter into a long position if both the lower and the upper line of the Darvas box is above the 200 length EMA. This way, we can avoid some of the bad entry signals printed in raging or sideways market periods. And the last rule is that we only enter once per new Darvas box level. This means that for example here you can see that we have a Darvas box. But in this Darvas box we got more than one buy signal. With this rule, we will only enter on one of these signals. As you can see, on this candle all of the four conditions are met. Price is above the 200 length TMA, we got a buy signal, None of the Darvas box lines are under the EMA, and this is the first signal on this Darvas box level. So now we enter into a long position. Stop loss goes to the lower Darvas box line, and the take profit is a 1 to 1.5 times risk to reward ratio. As you can see, this one was a winner. Now let's see the rules for short entry. For a short entry, first the price needs to be under the 200 length EMA. Then we want to see a sell signal printed by the Darvas box. Just like with the long positions, we can only enter on one signal per Darvas box level. And finally, both of the lines of the Darvas box needs to be under the 200 length TMA. Again, this rule helps to avoid some of the bad entry signals in sideways markets. As you can see, on this candle all the four criteria is met. The price is under the 200 length TMA, we got a sell signal, none of the Darvas box lines is above the 200 EMA, and we enter only one position per Darvas box level. So now we can enter into a short position. Stop loss goes to the upper Darvas box and the take profit will be a 1 to 1.5 times risk to reward ratio. As you can see, this one was a successful trade. 
Now I have to mention that this strategy uses the same rules as Straight Pro presented it in his own video. In his video, the strategy had 49 winners and 51 losers, which gave a 22.5% gain on the account. I will backtest the strategy on Bitcoin USDT 4 hour chart on the newest price data. This price data is out of Trade Pro's backtest, so this way we can see if this strategy is still profitable. And now let's see the 100 backtest. And the results are in. If you like this type of content and want to see more videos like this, don't forget to drop a like on this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. After 100 trades on the Bitcoin USDT 4 hour chart, we had 42 winners and 58 losses. This brings us to a 5% gain on the account. Most winners in a row was 4, but the most losses in a row was 11, which is very high. Time to complete the 100 trades was 477 days. Let's take a look at the equity curve. On the equity curve you can see that the strategy had a relatively steadily uptrending period, but then we had a big losing streak, around 7 losing trades in a row. Then the strategy started to trend up again slowly, but at the end there was another huge losing streak of around 11 trades. This equity curve is not good at all, a good strategy can't have such big losing streaks or drawdowns. Now let's see where this strategy is placed on the ranking sheet. On the ranking sheet, based on daily profit in percentage, the strategy is placed at spot number 39. This is mainly because it took a lot of days to get all the 100 trades. If you want to check out all the strategies that have been tested on this channel so far, the link to this spreadsheet will be down in the description. Now let's go over two optimizations which I think can make the strategy perform better. The first one is to exit the trade when an entry signal appears opposite to the entry signal we entered on. For example, here you can see the last trade of the backtest, which was a losing long position. If we would have exited the position when the Darvas box indicator printed a sell signal, this trade would have been a winner instead of a losing one. I haven't tried it on all of the 100 trades, but it seems that it can make the strategy better. Try it yourself and let me know about your findings in the comment section. The second optimization is to use volume spikes as entry criteria. In the original Darvas box strategy, Nicholas Darvas would only enter into a position if on the box breakout candle the volume was above the average volume or had a volume spike. The reason for this is that high volume shows high interest from traders that can lead to a higher probability of profiting on that trade. To implement this rule into the strategy, we will need a volume indicator on the chart and a moving average with bands. So type volume in the indicators tab and click on it. After that type in moving average with bands and click on this one. Now click on the volume and start pulling it down to the bottom of the chart and release it. This way the volume will be displayed in a separate window, not on the chart. Do the same thing with the moving average bands, so click on it, start pulling it down and release it once it's on the volume indicator. The next step is to go into the moving average with band settings and change its source to volume. This way the moving average will move according to the volume. After that you can decide which type of moving average you want to use, which length and which width. Now I will use these settings, but it's up to you to find the best one. Our new filter indicator is all set, so let's see how we can use it to filter. On the entry candles the volume needs to be higher than the moving average and its bandth. This way we can be sure that the volume was above average or had a spike. This adds an extra confirmation of the entry. Feel free to test out both of these indicators, tweak them as you like and share your opinions with the community in the comment section. And that wraps up today's video. For premium trading scripts, optimizations, Discord membership and trading bot automatization, visit our Patreon page and become a Smart Trader tier member today. If you found value in today's video, don't forget to drop a like on this video, subscribe if you haven't already and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. And with that said, thank you all for watching, have an amazing day and see you in the next video.